I remember looking at that picture a lot. It gave me comfort to be there. And I was at day school almost every day. I just became enraptured in this picture of Jesus on the wall. I couldn't explain why I would want to know him, but I just felt loved when I looked at the picture and I just thought, if he's like this in a picture, what would he be like in real life? My mom divorced when I was three years old, so I didn't really know or remember what it was like to live with a man, a dad. Um, I had no concept of how a dad and children related, much less a dad and a daughter. I just wanted things to work. I didn't know any different when he started approaching me in inappropriate ways. He would come into my room and, and take my hand and bring me into his room and cuddle with me and their bed in the mornings while my mom was getting ready. Things started changing a little bit though. It went from just cuddling and rubbing with clothes on to actually him removing my underwear and, you know, taking off my nightgown and taking his clothing off as well and doing things with us, with us being completely naked, still under the covers, but both of us exposed. He would have me rub him, he would have me um, touch him and give him pleasure, the kind of pleasure that a wife should give a husband and not a child. And I didn't know it was abuse. All of this started when I was six and kept progressing until I was about 10 and a half. And I can't tell you the exact age or date or month or year at which I started realizing this is getting out of control and I started feeling like this is not right. My stepdad was just getting more bold in what he did and how he did it. It wasn't just in the bedroom anymore. It became more public. We would go to the lake and he would get a life jacket and he would sit in a life jacket out a little bit further away from the dock and he would call me out to where he was and sit me on his lap and make me caress him underwater until he had pleasure. But everybody else would be on the dock swimming, fishing. His kids, my brother, my mom, they would all be swimming. And I would just be staring at everyone, hoping that they would come and find out what was going on. I wanted someone to catch us doing it. And it just never happened. At a certain point, my mom decided to start bringing us back to church. And I don't know what motivated her, but it, was, it changed my life. There was something about the pastor of this church that reached out to me. There was something about him that was warm, um, compassionate, and kind. The same feeling that I felt from seeing the picture of Jesus on the wall at um, my day school, I felt with him. And I didn't know what it was, um, but I started guessing that it had something to do with God because both of those things happened in church. And I didn't know God yet, but I was starting to learn stories about Him. Just different things about God, stuff I didn't believe could ever be true. Um, that a God would part the Red Sea to rescue His people. Um, that a God would come, you know, to earth to speak to His own people, that He cared about us that much. And there was something about the Spirit of God in those times in that church that made me start thinking, maybe God can help me. I remember there was a morning when I had decided that I wasn't gonna go in there anymore. And he came across the hall, just walked across the hall right where my mom got ready. I was completely awake and he kept shaking me, trying to get me to come in. And I wouldn't go. I just thought to myself, 
If God could rescue the Israelites, if He could part the Red Sea, maybe He can rescue me right now. So I screamed in my head, not out loud. I was too afraid to say anything out loud, but I just screamed in my head. I had my fists clenched and I just screamed, God, would you make him leave? And before I knew it, he had turned completely 180 degrees around and walked out of my room. And I just thought, God is real. God did this and he's rescued me. And so I thought it was over. I thought for sure this is it. And the next morning he came in again, same way, same situation. And I put my head in my pillow again and I didn't know what else to do except to, to scream out to God again. And I did, and I said, God, please, will you please make him leave? And he did, and he never came back. A few weeks after God rescued me, God gave me the courage to talk to my mom about everything that had happened. And when she heard, she divorced my stepdad and moved us into a safe place with my grandparents. And we lived with them for a few years. And I started learning more and more about Jesus, more and more about what it meant to be saved. Um, not just saved from my situation, but that He also needed to save me from my own sin. And so when I was 11, I came to know Jesus as my Savior. Since then, it's been a journey. Um, I feel so dedicated to Him because of how He acted on my behalf, how He saved me from so much. And He's been a father to me my whole life. He is a person who I depend on when I don't know who to depend on. I've learned how to depend on Him. Sometimes I want to walk down that road of shame and I want to carry all that baggage of when I was 10 years old. I feel like I'm that person again. But if I'm brave enough, if I look to Him when I'm feeling weak, if I can look to Him when I'm feeling hurt, if I can look to Him when I see this shame creeping in from my past, when I see all of that stuff that I want to just push back and wish that I could just make it not be there, if I look to Him, I know that instead of pushing it away, if I can look at it and let Him heal me from it, then I believe He'll meet me with His courageous grace and show me that I was beautiful when I was a child and I'm beautiful today. He'll take my story of shame and turn it into one of redemption.